There's a difference between R.A. Kelly and Robert. R.A. Kelly's this fun, laughing, loving guy. But Robert is the devil, is the devil, is the devil. R. Kelly is at the top of the charts, but he may be in for a fall. He was arrested today on 21 counts of child pornography. Kelly is accused of videotaping himself having sex with an underage girl. Taking advantage of minors will not be tolerated. Jurors found him not guilty on all charges. Robert has said all along he would be clear to these terrible charges. Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Milk R. Kelly! Milk R. Kelly! Milk R. Kelly! Milk R. Kelly! I've never introduced her to him. I should have never introduced my family to him. He's the puppet master. It was very scary because I knew at that moment I had a secret. He ain't a monster by himself. It took some help. I'm just ready to get the hell out of there. Black women don't get the same recognition as our white counterparts. And I wish that would change. A grown man, 50-something years old. That's not acceptable, nowhere. We're joined now by one of R. Kelly's first backup singers, former protege, Stephanie Edwards, known by her stage name, Sparkle, and award-winning Chicago Sun-Times reporter, Kathy Cheney, who has covered R. Kelly for over a decade. Welcome both of you to the show. Thank you, Thank you for being here. Sparkle, I wanna start with you and your former relationship with Robert R. Kelly. When did you first meet him and what were your initial thoughts of him? And then when did things change for you? I initially met him in 1989 um, when he was working with um, Billy Ocean at the time. Fast forward to 92, um, I was asked to come back, you know, sing for him. And then I got to, I'm the girl on the backgrounds of the AJ Nothing But A Number CD. So what makes you believe that he's guilty of these allegations? Oh, my niece on the 26 minute tape. So your yes. niece. Yes, that's explain, my niece. Explain this to our viewers. Yes, my niece is on a 26 minute tape with R. Kelly and he's having sexual relations. Yes. And of course we're talking about the infamous tape that he went to trial for, that he was acquitted. You were the key witness yes. for the prosecution. Yes. You went on stand and said, that is definitely my niece in the you know tape. What? Even prior to that, um, Val, before I had heard when I left the group, so right. to speak, when I left there, um, maybe in 2001, I started getting a phone call from people in his camp stating something's not right. You need to check into this. I would definitely not right because your niece was hanging yes, out with him. Yes. Right. And so how you old was need she at to this watch point? her. Um, she was probably 14. 14. Yeah. OK, she so she was hanging out in the studio yes. regularly with R. Kelly. Yes. And I had introduced them when she was 12 because she was a really great rapper. I, I wanted to, I actually introduced my entire family because we're a musical family. Right. I didn't want to be selfish with my talent and, and selfish with anything that God had, God had given me. So I wanted to share the wealth with the family. Right. And I brought her down. Her parents brought her down, actually, and, and introduced them at that time. Then I brought other nieces and nephews that were great. Her, her father who played guitar for him. Yes. I got him the gigs and, and got him on to play guitar. So yeah, mm -hmm. I wanted it to be like we've come in like the Jacksons. Right. He had a new record label, so hey, you can you, you need family. something. Yeah. Right, I want to bring Kathy in too, but I want, I want you to answer this first, and then Kathy, I want you to follow up because I know that Chicago Sun-Times did an article in 2000 mm -hmm. about some of these allegations. Uh, how surprised were you when he was found acquitted and not guilty? What, why do you think he was not found guilty? Well, per my knowledge of the case and what, per what people were saying to me, um, prosecution at the time, that they believed that Robert was the person on the tape. What they couldn't get w was if the girl on the tape was the age that we were saying she was. And, and here's another piece of controversy which in is, this whole which thing. Which is crazy and crap. But you said on the tape, that's my niece. Yes. But your brother and your niece got on stand and said otherwise. My brother and a couple other... Um, people but m myself and another brother and his his wife who was a Chicago cop at that time testified that that was her then okay forget me there are 15 p other people 
in our neighborhood that we grew up in in Oak Park that say that the fact that that's her, right. her coach, um, police officers. But do you think the parents, fact that she friends, did not say that that was that, her on the tape that yes. hurt the case? Yes. What does she say now? She doesn't say. She doesn't say. I still, I still hand her with kid gloves because this is a lot. This is yeah. this just, just coming back to this whole situation. It's a lot for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So I can just imagine what it is for her. Well, this made you estranged from your family for yes, a decade, I was right? Because for ten years until 2011. Um, from 2001 to 2011, I didn't speak to the family. Kathy, what are your thoughts on the case? And, and the Chicago Sun-Times was the first publication to print this in 2000. The Chicago Sun-Times completely owned the coverage. Um, they were unafraid to, you know, put the allegations out there because everything was documented. And then the tape came. Um, the I tape was, was actually mailed to the Sun-Times. Yes, yeah. it was sent to Jim DeRogatis, um, and they you know, looked at the tape, and I never wanted to see it, but had to at trial, and um, just extremely disturbing and graphic. But for the trial, I will say that I've talked to some jurors afterwards, and they were saying they all believed that it was him. They knew it was him, but the fact that the girl and the parents did not show up, would not cooperate, and denied that it mm -hmm. was her, they had no choice, no choice legally to you know, acquit him. So that's what it was. In the docuseries, we saw a lot during the trial where you would see women at the courthouse still cheering and rooting for him coming in and out of the crowds. But then there's a whole nother group of women who are about the mute R. Kelly. Kathy talked about that. Um, it, was, it was actually astounding because when the trial was happening and the crowds were out there, there were more supporters out there shouting for him outside of the court steps then you had people that were against him. And, you know, they just outweighed him. And then you saw the few little girls who came every single day. And my colleagues and I, we were sitting there like, look at this, this is so sad. Because he had a bus that was like parked a block away from the courthouse. So when we were on lunch break, he would always go down there. And sometimes you would see the little girls go down there. Well, we did reach out to R. Kelly about the series and the allegations in it, and he told us no comment. Right, but we also uh, have seen that his music is streaming more than ever recently. What, what are your thoughts on that? I have no words. Like, I'm baffled by it all, you know? It's Do you think it's a curiosity factor for those who know, may have heard the music, listened to it, but now we're looking into it, trying to figure out was he saying yeah. what he was doing, I, allegedly doing? Yeah. I, I believe that's one of the factors. A and, small and part, yeah, hopefully. yeah, and right. then, then the the second is that th they just want to stick it to the people who were, you know, a part of the, the documentary. I don't Let know. Let me ask you this, too, because he's now coming out with a website, Surviving Liars, I believe, or something like that, um, where he now is going to, according to him and his team, say that all of these stories are nothing but lies. So, <laughs> for me, I don't know about anybody else, I am the only, the first girl to speak out about this regarding my niece in that tape. Even prior to that, when I heard rumblings of him um, possibly doing something to her, I went to the authorities and they basically told me, they looked into it, but they basically told me my hands were tied because I'm only the aunt. Many women, several from Chicago, came forward in the series telling their stories. Let's take a look at that. Can you describe how he treated you? I felt like I could talk to him, you know, like he was a normal person, not a celebrity, very welcoming. Robert treated me very well. Charismatic, funny, extremely caring. He's hard not to like. It was very romantic to me. Our relationship was beautiful in the beginning, but um, didn't know about the storm on the horizon. He would break you down. He would turn around and say, I'm the only one that loves you. I'm the only one who cares about you. I was mentally drained. Robert feels as if he's invincible. I can't be touched. And in hindsight, in society, we kind of made him feel that way. Almost 50 people interviewed in this docuseries, and you hear a lot of the same stories. Early on, Robert, I, I would, I would get 
things that he would say to me like, um, you know, um, I, I don't want you dealing with those people. You know, you're above them. So he would like put me like you stay in the booth or you, you know, you don't have any interaction with them. Don't speak to them, you know, but I found it, you know, I'm like, that's not me. I'm not that girl. I'm going to speak to everybody. And and if I don't want to speak to you, I won't. But but you can't tell me what to do. You know, I, I'm not one of those little girls. When the Sun-Times broke this in 2000, what was the initial response? For one, I think people were saying, well, we knew this already, mm -hmm. but they didn't know that tapes existed and then you get to see the tape. And then his supporters, yeah, they're going to mute anything else that anyone has to say negative about him because they love R. Kelly. They love the music. Hmm. Well, last summer, after months of silence, R. Kelly released I Admit, a 19-minute song that dove into many allegations and controversial headlines. I admit I'm a freak. Used to go to strip clubs every week. I admit I f with all the ladies. That's both older and young ladies. But tell me how they call it pedophile because of that. That's crazy. I'm so falsely accused. Tell me, how can you judge when you never walk in my shoes? Were you surprised when he released that, Kathy? I call it a 19-minute deflection. It's a, it's a disturbing thing, to say the least. Whether the allegations are true or not, we don't know, and we don't know what's going to come of it. I know for you, personally, you're still doing music. I am. How, how has your career been? Um, I, I, I went to get my family back. Mm. Um, 2011, like I said, my, my parents had their 50th anniversary and we had a bit to do for them. Um, and um, I sat down and, and enjoyed my family. Um, now, 2017, late 2017, I started to do new music and um, I was, you know, asked to do this series in February, March, and I taped in April. Um, so it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. I went back in the studio because I was like, I need to speak to this. I need to speak to this time. So I came up with the song, the We Already song that you may have heard on the end of the piece. Um, and, you know, we're, we're uh, percentage of the proceeds from the song. Uh, we're, we're spreading it around to a few charitable charities, you know, that, you know, for abused women, sexual, sexual abused women, mentally abused women. So we're spreading the love around. So, um, yeah, I'm still doing music and I have a new EP that, that'll be coming out soon. Of course, thank you, Sparkle, for sharing your story. And of course, Kathy, for being with us again. We reached out to R. Kelly. He told us he had no comment.